I'm Beth Osasek. I'm the Vice President of Documentaries and Limited Series at Hulu, and you are watching Filmio. It is Lauren Delisa Coleman back with another interview during South by Southwest. <laughs> What is going on everybody? It's Lauren Delisa Coleman here at the official Filmio Filmmakers Lounge at South by Southwest 2024 and I am super excited to jump into this next interview because this is a kind of executive point of view interview. I have two wonderful women with me now from Hulu Disney to my far right Beth Osisik who is the Vice President Content and Development documentaries and limited series at Hulu Disney. And then to her left, I have Belissa Balaban, who is the Senior Vice President, Hulu Original Documentaries and Unscripted Series. Trust me, they're busy. So we are really lucky to have them. They just got here to South by Southwest not long ago. Ladies, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. My absolute pleasure. It's so funny, it's like a kind of Hulu Disney moment if you watch these back to back because P. Frank Williams, of Freak Nick just left and now we're having the team that actually greenlit his project, not by like, you know, design, really just coincidence. So great place to start, right? How did that project come to light? Because Frank was even saying, 72 hours, you were like, yes, I'm all in. How do you make your decisions there, right? Because I'm sure you're seeing so much stuff like per day, right? How do you know what's going to be really a, a, a Hulu Disney kind of project and what isn't? Well, I'd say we have a very specific filter. We, there's a lot of documentaries on Hulu. A lot of them come in through other sources, but for the ones that we green light, we have a very clear idea of what we're looking for. We have a really good understanding of who our audience is and what they like to see. So, for instance, when P. Frank and the team came in with Freak Nick, we felt very confident from the beginning that that was a great story for our audience. We love culture stories that are a uh, lens into broader themes and Freaknik really had it all plus it, we're very entertainment forward right. brand we we have documentaries that should be like really enjoyable to watch even if they're tough subjects it should be really entertaining and we knew Freaknik would be that start to finish yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think it's something that people refer to all the time. I have three kids, two of them that are very into hip hop. They have no idea what it is or what the origins are. And so for me, getting to the root of that and really kind of tracing that whole story is so exciting to have that opportunity. Wow. I, I love to be able to hear this and it's so interesting to hear, you know, you guys say Freak Nick because it's just <laughs> like, okay. Um, tell me a little bit about how you both kind of came to this role, right? Because we all know documentaries are super hot right now. You are probably, hopefully, having fun day to day in your, in your roles. How did you both get there and then what's your kind of typical, if there is such a thing, day like? Sure. Um, well, I feel very fortunate. I've worked at Hulu for seven years. Really? Um, yeah, going on eight, I think. Um, and I had done a lot of different things in entertainment across my career. I was a producer for a long time. I've oh, also and I've been a participant before. That's correct. right. Yes, yes. That was my last job right before. Hulu, um, I think participant is kind of legendary-ish. Mm -hmm. There's not been much from them yet, but that's a whole nother, whole nother episode. That but was anyway. an amazing, <laughs> amazing opportunity. I loved being there, worked on there. For anyone who doesn't know, participant is a um, uh, socially relevant media company, um, always looking to create positive social change with the, their projects. Um, and um, so I was lucky to be the head of programming at their television network and unfortunately that that went the way of um, cable uh, but then I was lucky to come over to Hulu and um, really start the original documentaries slate which was an amazing opportunity cool. yes we had done one film before I started um, Beatles film eight days a week which is amazing but we didn't have a whole slate so that was what was really exciting for me to be able to really like craft the remit and um, and build the whole slate. Wonderful. Yeah. And Beth? 
Um, so I have sort of an odd story of coming in here because it wasn't anything that I had planned to a certain extent in that um, I had worked as a journalist, I worked as a filmmaker, um, I worked as a journalist to support my documentary habit as my dad used to like to say, but I had worked with Belisa when she was a participant a million years ago and then we had also known each other um, from another incarnation um, uh, working on a documentary series um, when we were both younger, not I won't say young because we're still young, right? Right. Um, but you are I eternally 27 her. like I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Welcome to the club. <laughs> but I called her. I was a freelancer. I called her in between jobs um, trying to get a coffee just to see what they were looking for. Mm. And she had two shows that they were doing that they needed coverage on. And it was my journalism background, ironically, that got me in the door. And I had time to fill and was so excited for the opportunity, but because I thought, oh, I'm gonna get over the wall and see what it's like on this side. And then just loved the job, loved the team, and um, ended up staying. But it wasn't a plotted out oh, kind of yeah, career move. It's so you are looking at projects then from a kind of journalist eye as well, which I is think that, and then both of us have background as filmmakers as well, so we bring all which I think is probably um, great while you're speaking to filmmakers because it's kind of like, what do you know, right? If, if you aren't, you really actually are a, a peer at that point. We do really understand, I think, how hard it is to, you know, craft a project, to run a company, to sell projects, like everything about being an independent producer, filmmaker, can be really challenging. So I think, you know, that's hopefully something that um, we bring to the table in a positive way with collaborations with filmmakers. So great. And it has paid off, obviously. Like, just run down a few of the fabulous titles for people who don't know. You, I mean, I'll, you know, start off Hillary, Fire Fraud. What else have you guys kind of been the, the yeses behind? Um, sure. Days. Well, so we've done um, Victoria's Secret, we've done God Forbid, which is about Jerry Falwell, Becky Falwell, and Giancarlo Grande, um, who were all involved together um, by a great team at Rank Tour and um, at Adam McKay's company. Um, we've done Von Dutch, we've done, um, we've got some really great stuff coming up. We also have a John Bon Jovi uh, multi-parter that is going to be premiering here. Yes, that, that, that Gotham directed, correct? Yes, yes exactly. Gotham Joe Brett. That's yeah. coming, so does he pronounce it Gotham or Gotham? Because he's Indian and so I don't know, but anyway, we were hoping to have him here. This is why I'm so knowing about the pronunciation, right. or allegedly, but they don't get in until this finishes, which is, I guess, tomorrow? Yeah. They get in on the 14th or something. But yeah, the Bon Jovi doc, like everybody's talking about that for sure. That, I didn't realize that was Hulu. Yes, that's Hulu. Insane. Yeah. So I guess like asking you to pick a favorite one is like asking you to pick a favorite child. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we can't pick a favorite, but I will call out one that, that Beth hasn't mentioned yet that um, was another incredible project, a Stolen Youth. Yes. Um, inside the cult at Sarah Lawrence, which we worked mm -hmm. on for a very long time. Um, and uh, yeah, we we have told, I think we were talking before that, you know, we end up doing a lot of kind of true crime stories. Um, we are always looking for stories where we can give a voice to survivors. Um, and um, and really tell a story from the inside out, and that that project was quite unique uh -huh. in that way because we got to follow people who were kind of still under mind control, um, and as they took their lives back, just fascinating. Really yeah, as everybody already knows I'm a true crime junkie, and I'm proud to own it. I don't mind. Um, tell me a little bit about. My pleasure. <laughs> um, tell me, um, why do you guys think documentaries are just so hot right now? I mean, they always have been hot, but I feel like before when we might speak about a documentary, I don't know, 20 years ago, it was, I don't know, not, maybe not very considered very chic or entertaining. It was something which was maybe more educational, right? Well, and now it's changed a completely different way that, that people are like, oh, narrative, it may work, or it may not, um, but documentary like for sure, right? What happened? I, I what changed? Hit the nail on the head. It's entertaining now. Like we, entertainment is not a dirty word. You can still move the needle. You can still move people. 
but we're storytellers and first and foremost we have to tell entertaining stories and I think documentary has embraced that in a really big way and I would put the best documentaries head to head with the best scripted and so, and honestly when there's two of them I prefer the documentary I want to see the real everybody's people. saying the same thing though and yeah. I mean like a regular <laughs> regular person yeah um, because you feel like you can know what you're gonna get whereas narrative if you spin the wheel and take a chance at the end you're like I'm not, still not satisfied but something about documentary I guess because we as human beings are just very interesting and it's harder to kind of maybe mess that up or something. Well, you can't, so many of these things you can't make up. Right. Well, How could you make up the Sarah Lawrence scenario? That's, you know that's what I mean? exactly it. Those are the stories that we love in that they're the stories that I always joke around like, you cannot write this. <laughs> right. And if you put it into a script, someone would be like, oh no, that is over the top. Right. That's when we know it's a Hulu documentary, <laughs> when you're just Actually, sitting back and thinking to yourself, what I was going to ask you, then what kind of, out of the universe of documentaries, what makes for one that is right for Hulu Disney. You touched on it before yeah. that it needs to be entertaining or a story that you kind of are drilling down into or drilling out from. But is it is it something which you can I mean you don't have something where you're like ticking off on your desk. No, but you we feel do, it, right? Yeah. But I do think that that immediate hook of like, wait what? Like that leaning forward, I need to hear more about the story, that is the that is one of the first things we're looking for. We like stories that are about popular culture, um, topics that are that have a kind of tabloid interest um, that could be of interest to anyone. And then we use those very specific narratives as a way into like to larger themes. Um, but it always starts with that hook. Um, you know, we're talking about stranger than fiction stories. We have another film coming out later this spring called The Contestant. Um, that is truly a stranger than fiction story um, about um, a young man who went on a, he's Japanese, he went on a Japanese game show, this is in the late 90s, he didn't know quite what he was getting into, and um, I guess I don't really want to get, give it away, but no. like it, it um, cause you I have realize to watch. people are watch, the watching this, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it turned out very differently than what he anticipated and you have to see it to find out. But I also wanted to answer your question about why I think this is um, a hot time for documentaries. I think that streaming has brought, has made the, the, the barriers to access documentaries um, down. And that, um, and we really have to give our colleagues at Netflix credit mm -hmm. for this because they were programming documentaries early on and they were very popular. They saw that, they programmed more. And when, um, when more projects get commissioned, more money goes into the system and creates more opportunities, more, more voices come in to our creative field. And when there are more opportunities for more people, the, the work goes forward creatively things progress so I just think that the form has been going forward I think uh, the, the work that's being done is extraordinary and it's become because more people can make a career out of it. It, it it the the barrier to access is not what it was even when we were coming up I mean I couldn't afford to start in documentaries at the beginning because it was a rare person who could make a living at it and now many more people can make a living at it and I think that is bringing the more people we have in the tent the more the work will progress and just and get better really and better. a great way to analyze things. So now that you did all that for this moment, what do you guys think is going to be the, either the next phase of kind of the documentary realm or uh, new types of stories or something or genres of documentary? What do you think? Because how do you keep uh, just ahead of the viewer? Mm -hmm. Take this one? Well, I mean, when I dream about it, I think that in general, storytelling is at a point that gaming is going to come into it. People are going to be able to influence uh, what happens in a story and how that um, the outcomes and things like that. I think it's limitless what um, is going to be happening going forward. It's what our imagination decides, really, mm -hmm. because the technology is there. So it's just a matter of kind of wrapping minds around story and how best to tell it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't I can't wait to see it. So you're here at South By. Mm -hmm. Certainly not your first time. No, but we love to come. Um, what do you think, um, why do you think it's important to still come to 
South by, especially as very senior executives, right? You mm -hmm. could easily sit in your fabulous offices all day every day and don't, right? That's funny. You still come <laughs> out. Why? Um, community for for one I mean I think that um, to be able and this was something that I think everyone really felt was the lack of during the pandemic there there we really appreciated the fact that we were able to screen films virtually during the pandemic that was amazing we bought films during the pandemic without ever being in person at a festival um, and I do think the digital component to some to some festivals is can be really valuable. But there there is something that happens when you're together in community. Now, of course, we work for a streaming service, so we program things that people watch by themselves on a, on a screen. Um, but to be in community with filmmakers and other people from our industry, um, I think that also. It, that that's the that's a part of the creative process and new relationships form here relationships deepen um, so there I think there really is no substitute for being in person and you South by I d definitely do there's nothing like seeing that film up on the screen and hearing the laughs when they're supposed to come in and feeling the emotional wave as it comes through but I would also add that South by is a unique um, festival in that it brings people from so many different disciplines together. And so Very it becomes, true. you know, a place where ideas marinate and go back out into the world. So for us, we couldn't ask for a better place with the music crossover to be premiering both Freaknik and um, the John Bon Jovi story. It's just tailor-made for us. Perfect timing. Right Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, anything else you want to add before we close up? It's so fun. I could talk to you like all day about documentaries, um, but we can't. <laughs> and we need to get going. Um, but yeah, anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you so much yes. for having us. Yeah. Thanks for thanks to people for watching, and um, yeah, and just looking forward to sharing Freak Nick. And thank you. Good night, the John Bon Jovi story with when you. Is that, um, do you have a, a release date for it? Release so we're, we're, we hope everyone will watch um, Freak Nick and Thank You Goodnight, the John Bon Jovi story on Hulu later this spring. Great. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. My absolute Super pleasure. Fun. You guys, and thank you so much for watching. This has been Lauren Delisa Coleman right here for the official Filmio Filmmakers Lounge at South by Southwest 2024.